This is currently AMD's fastest APU. I'm gonna try and quickly tame all of the uh, wait for Zen comments because this video and these benchmarks are meant to compare these APUs to the Zen APUs when they come out. So this review might be kind of longish. Uh, I wanna to touch on most things. So this is AMD's fastest APU by a small amount. So right here I'm mainly looking at uh, the three A10 Godavari processors. Now, Godavari was a small refresh over uh, AMD Kaveri. The only thing Godavari even has over Kaveri, the small boost and the iGPU. Anyway, the top of the line Kaveri APU was the A107850K. Then with Godavari came out the A107870K with a slight boost in megahertz on the CPU and then bumping the GPU 720 megahertz to 866 megahertz. And this is a beefed up version of that, the A107890K. So all this added over the 7870K is about 200 megahertz. And my favorite feature, the AMD Wraith Cooler, which this is my first time using and I love it. It's whisper quiet over my main system with two Corsair SP fans. It's quite large compared to AMD's old stock coolers and when I first turned it on, I noticed an LED through the spinning fins and I was confused where it was coming from until I eventually looked on the other side of the cooler and saw the illuminated AMD logo, which can only be perfectly viewed from head on and I thought to myself, you know what, AMD's freaking awesome. Now let's get into the specs. The A107890K has 12 compute cores, that's 4 CPU cores and 8 GPU cores. The CPU is clocked at 4.1 GHz and can turbo to 4.3 GHz. That's disregarding the fact that this CPU is unlocked anyway, so, so realistically you could have gone with like a, a 7870K and just overclocked it. You know, so out of the box this is just faster. It has a TDP of 95 watts, it has 4 megabytes L2 cache, and on AMD's 28 nanometer process. In terms of memory, it can handle two channels of 2133 megahertz memory. Holy crap, that was loud. Someone's trying to drive through snow out there. The system I'm testing this on consists of an uh, MSI A68HM E33 V2 FM2 Plus motherboard, 8 gigabytes of 2133 MHz G scale rip draws memory. Actually, it's Ares, I wrote rip draws, but whatever. I'm also using a 250 gigabyte Crucial BX100 for the boot drive and a 750 watt power supply. In terms of cooling on stock, I'm using the Wraith cooler, and when I've overclocked, I moved to the Corsair H105. So that so I can push this chip farther because of an issue I'm having with temps. So I'll talk about that later. In total, there will be three items tested. First, you'll see the A87600, another quad-core APU with integrated R7 graphics as clocked out 3.1 GHz. Second is the A107890K at stock speeds. And thirdly, we'll have the A107890K overclocked as, as high as I can get it, really. Um, this isn't an overclocking motherboard. Not good overclocking support, I could go a little bit higher on the clock, but I mean, not like 4.7 gigahertz or whatever. I'll go ahead and mention that I will not be using dual graphics mode because that requires either an R7 240 or 250, and I feel like it, it wouldn't be worth it. Once you spend $80 on top of this $150 chip, it will degrade the value even further. I think this chip would be great if you don't need to game heavily right now, you want to throw a graphics card on much later from now, or if you don't need a graphics card at all. It should also be noted, with an APU from AMD, you will be limited to 1GB of DDR3 VRAM, which is a bottleneck in GTA 5 and, and other games today. Just, just lower the resolution, you might be fine. I also wouldn't recommend this chip because of the fact that it's an Athlon X4860K with, built, with a built-in GPU, so if you're serious about gaming, uh, then this wouldn't be for you. It also should be noted that since new architectures from both AMD and Intel are on the way, I can't recommend this for the reason that it'll be outdated so soon. Lastly, this is the best FM2 Plus processor you can get. There's no upgrade path for this in the future. After this, you'll need to buy a new processor, motherboard, and most likely RAM too. I'm using a new method for benchmarking. I hope that's easier for you to comprehend. Uh, I don't know if you'd rather uh, watch graphs or watch it this way. I feel like this is easier uh, to see. Actually much easier for me to make too. First we'll run through my usual benchmarks. These are typically more demanding games, after which you can jump to some lighter titles, something more reasonable if you're considering an APU.
Now, the temps are kind of screwy. I, I wish AMD had a much easier way to monitor temps. Thermal sensor or whatever is all off. So take these temps with the biggest handful of salt you could find because they're off. They're definitely off. And I've had people saying their temps were over 100 degrees and like they weren't overclocked heavily at all. I was also thinking I could pair this processor with like my GTX 970 and then compare that to my i5 with the 970 to see how big the gap is be between like Godavari and like Skylake or Haswell or whatever. But I could do that in another video. It'd be way too much to cram all that in, in this one. So I will get working on that one and I will see you guys next time.